So we're pretty excited because we get to show you guys some never-before-seen behind-the-scenes images from Frozen. So Alina and Sean are going to talk about that. And then Dylan and I uh, get to show you some images from our film that's coming out on November 7th called Big Hero 6. Yeah, that's right. So, thank you. Yeah, so a lot of never before seen images and concept art and some design sculpts are coming your way. But this guy was so difficult because he's huge. He's, he's got Hulk-like proportions. He's made out of armor, but he has to move like nobody's business. He's a main character in an animated feature. So he is incredibly dynamic in an action-packed animated feature. So all this stuff has to move. And of course, as soon as you move any joint on that initial design, something penetrates without fail. There was no joint on here that worked right off the bat. So we had to work as a team and work, I think we ended up having a meeting, well we'd have a, a meeting twice a week or so with all those people involved and then we'd just let all of them work um, in whatever fashion they needed to do it to get it done within the time frame. So Stefano would go to the rigger, the rigger would go to the animator, uh, the animator would go right to Stefano. Whatever worked is what they did. And in ZBrush, we, we do definitely do a little bit of the color and a little bit of the posing to sell the characters to the director, so that way um, when it is like kind of approved design, they're seeing it in a more f final way, and then we can just move on from there in the pipeline. And then this is how it looked like in the movie. You could see the textures and the hair coming through. So it did do like quite a big transition from the, the where, where we started and where we ended um, the old troll. And these jewels were a big thing too because we didn't know um, how they were going to work with the, the cloth and everything, you know, the, how bright they were gonna be. Um, and this is, looking at that design, this is sort of, the finished product, which is a like VizDev render, um, a modeling render of the mountain. This is all the geometry that went into the film, but not rendered uh, in our engine. And that's because I need to show them what it's going to look like down the pipeline. So uh, basically, once I got those big shapes extruded out of the mountain, just volumetrically having how that should occupy space, I created a bunch of rocks that then I painted in 3D that have those same ideas. Uh, that are basically um, using the multi-mesh brush. I can even <laughs> you can basically just keep drawing and building these up uh, and essentially make on top of your, your geometry the, the formation that you want, which is mainly these, these giant straights. Uh, it's just a great way to instantly get that type of detail in there. Now, of course, I'd be going through rotating all this stuff, um, spending a whole bunch of time but you can just see now with like DynaMesh, being able to take something like this, you can just very quickly build up something. And if you change the design language, if they ask me like, those lock rocks don't look right, can we add more of a curve here or we're looking for more general sweep, you can go back, sculpt a few rocks, put them into that multi-mesh tool and start drawing them out again. And you're putting all that complex design into the very finite, small detail of the cliffs. This was kind of the first point in the process where we said, um, you know, let's take this into 3D and let's and, like, build this character out. So from there, um, the designs went over to uh, Jin Kim. Um, he's a great designer that we have, and he's really able to, you know, he did animation, so he's very uh, aware of how forms are going to turn and move in space. So this is sort of like a further development, like how are we going to get this guy into a, into a place where he can move and, and you know, we'll be able to rotate around this character. So that's what we started with. And then brought that into ZBrush. So here's the first ever iteration of Hero for the movie. For a lot of these earlier sculpts and stuff, we'll work in high subdivision levels and you know, do as much sculpting on these things as we can, because topology doesn't matter. We can do whatever we want to. But um, when I get closer to a final 
character, I'm usually working at like a level one topology, and that's because I want to be able to, you know, divide it up to see what that's going to look like. I want to make sure that all my forms read really well. But when, as soon as I'm done in a note session with character design or director, you know, they might say. The question is, how will they be the perfect clones? What a stage for the biggest match on the planet. The world is watching. First goal wins. No second chance. based in a concept art. Um, but they had still quite a lot of detail going into, into these guys. The hair is just like a proxy uh, hair with it just to, to know what it needs to look like. But um, quality wise, I think it has a lot of detail, lots of things going on. Uh, things that maybe you don't appreciate on the, on the commercial, but because it was the World Cup and it was night, they were doing, to the, they were doing some big prints for these guys and post them, I guess, everywhere. I haven't seen many, but, uh, but it was in Canada when, when this was you know, released. So uh, in Canada, I don't think they are big fans of uh, soccer, anyway. Um, but yeah, that's the sort of quality, we, we, or the detail we're trying to put in these guys. So for these guys, we generated displacement maps. We use this, this as the base uh, rig model. Um, we did plane shapes in Maya, and we were able to just transfer plane shapes again super easy. And again, most of the detail, we could transfer it as well from character to character and then just go there and clean up whatever we didn't want or we didn't like, just clean it up. And uh, that was the, the, the way to speed up things. Um, I think that the best thing of this project is how ZBrush was involved with it. And it was from right off the beginning of the project, we were already starting to to sculpt super quick characters just for the director to, to see and to have something to comment on because we had like nine or 10 main characters to do. So from the first day, we just sat there, we put one base geometry, we started sculpting and designing different characters. And from day, from day one, we were just spitting characters, uh, totally, con entirely done in ZBrush hair. The clothing we had at the time was all ZBrush. From there, it was just easy to do like paint overs on, on top of those renders from ZBrush and just send that to either the director or the agency. Um, so I don't think we could have done this without the software because, again, it was just super quick to just go there and start changing things, right? right. Detail on the finishing of the, of the final product. We had nice textures going on on the hands and the, and the, and the clothing, had like veins and things like that. The hands were super detailed as well. Even though you don't see it at the end of the, uh, in the film, at the end of the day, you don't see it, but you know, the detail is there and you know it is there and it always gives, right? So, with different versions for each character, with like different clothing for the characters. So it looks like Socho Bob from the Simpsons. Well, that is a funny story. Um, I saw this guy on, I think it was 3DSK or something like that. It's this webpage where you have like, t tons of people. And I saw the picture of this guy and I thought, oh, wow, he's got a really interesting face. Uh, let's see if I can do it in 3D and try to make a proper render. Uh, so I started doing it, and as I was doing it, I started thinking maybe I should just finalize it and do something different, not just like that guy, but try to put it into a context. 
So I started just thinking, and, and at the end I came, with, I came up with this idea uh, that the guy is sick, and well, there was a whole, a whole story behind it. Um, and then someone saw it, some of my friends when I was showing it around just to get some feedback, and one of the guys told me, oh man, that's so cool, I get what you're doing there. I said, what am I doing there? And he was, <laughs> he was like, yeah, that's a portrait of Picasso, and he's sick, right? I'm like, what? So, yeah, he's, he's, it's like a metaphor for, for the art nowadays, right? It's like uh, decadent, and I was like, well, what? <laughs> and he was like, that's, that's not Picasso? And I was, yeah, man, you got it. <laughs> totally <laughs> nailed it, that, that's it, you know, all right, thank you. So, um, yeah, that was a funny story, but uh, apart from that, you know, it's just like, a, I didn't have any sort of motivation to do it, like, I'm gonna do the best, no. Uh, I just, I saw the guy, I thought he had an interesting phase, and uh, I went there, and once I was going through it, I thought maybe I should just finish it and do something else, not just uh, have a couple of renders here. That's uh, one of the whip renders I was doing, testing the skin shader and things like that. This was supposed to be, well, not this. We have a party waiting for you. today are, are some of the techniques that we've been um, uh, using to, uh, to create these characters. Uh, uh, specifically today, I thought I would talk about um, some texturing techniques that uh, we use to, to do some of the heads. Um, so here I've got uh, a head that I typically take to uh, a certain percentage. I, I like to develop my my head and my textures kind of at the same time, so that you kind of have a, a coherency between the texturing and and the modeling you're doing. So that, uh, as opposed to kind of creating a character and then projecting some images on top, I like to try and work both of these things at the same time. So you know, you kind of develop the the whole character at the same time. What I'll actually do is, I'm sorry, go back to my original one and then load my front. So I'll get this. And then what I want to do is I want to take this image and then drop this onto my uh, to, uh, preserve miniature ZBrush. And now I basically have you know a texture that fits pretty close to my head. I, I've only had to really do one projection, uh, which is nice instead of just constantly like reprojecting separate areas of the face or, or going in and just doing multiple layers of this. I, I've basically been able to uh, accomplish kind of in one step how to get like the entire texture. And that's kind of where it would end up. So that's kind of the, the process I would use to, like I said, just kind of finish out, finish out my heads, finish out, or at least get a good jump on my texturing process and then kind of work the, the, the details later based on what my output is. So. That's it. So that. <laughs>